so there wasn't yeah. anybody that you could totally like express like nobody knew the real Adam no, nobody I did didn't you express... know the real Adam which one did you prefer I, I, I know I know which one, did you, which one did you prefer I preferred me at home and, yeah. like that, that's me honest that's me the truth me Muslim Adam the yeah. other the other Adam was, was like it's a lie Okay, you want to introduce it? Um, okay. We're just going to go straight to it. Okay, um, so um, just before we start, yes. just before we start, you have had any therapy before? No, I never. No I therapy? Never had, no, okay, not. amazing. Uh, just before you start any therapy session, we just get a few baseline questions and yeah. then we'll get into the actual therapy. Sounds so good. could you just remind me your age? Uh, 28 years old. And your ethnicity? Uh, Yemeni. Yemeni? And yeah. But you grew up in? I grew up in New York City. And you moved there when you were how old? Um, I was born in Oh, New you York. were born and raised. Okay. Yeah. And uh, number of siblings? Uh, five siblings. So five, and so there's six of you in total or there's five? S six total. Six total. And where do you come in the order of... Um... I'm number five. Oh, really? So you're towards the end? I'm second to last. Second yeah. to last. Yeah. And your parents, do you mind me asking, are they still together? Yeah, they're together. Yeah. They're together. And if you don't mind me asking, your um, father's occupation? Um, well, now he's retired, but yeah. he used to like... He used to work in a store, like people in New York, Yemenis. Okay. We, we we're like the ox. Okay. We work in a store, yeah. And did your mom work? Uh, my mom never worked. She never worked. Yeah. And uh, can you just describe your family dynamics? Like, who is the favorite? Who is the golden child? Like, who is the least favorite? How do you guys all work together as siblings? I mean, I always feel like the youngest one is yeah. the favorite. So I feel like my younger brother is. He's definitely the favorite. He's definitely the favorite. By both mom and dad. By uh, by the mom. By mom. By the mom, yeah. What about dad? Dad, the dad, I think, I think the oldest one, the oldest girl. Okay, the oldest yeah. girl. And in terms of you, who are you closest to? I'm more closer with my sisters, actually. Okay. Like, with all my sisters. How many sisters are there? I have three sisters. And you're closest to them? I'm closest the most to my sisters. I'm going to call my brothers, too, but my sisters are like, they always spoil me. Aww. They always just give me, like, here you go, this is eye cream, this is <laughs> this cream, this is yeah. for your hair. Like, I, I love my sisters. Who do you bicker with the most out of the siblings? What do you mean, like... Who do you uh, fight with the most? Oh, do I fight with the yeah. most? Not much. I mean, you could say brothers, but brothers. it's not much. But yeah. it's not... You're generally quite close? Yeah, we're close. You're close. We're close, yeah. And in terms of um, mum's relationship, like, is, does she spoil you quite a lot? Or is she more distant? Like, what is mum like? How does she show you love? She, she makes dua. That's what oh. she <laughs> Literally, so yeah. You don't fight with mum or dad much? Nah, or? never. Never you, fight with mum and dad. Never? The, yeah. only, the only reason why, if I would have a fight with my siblings... Is if they disrespect my mom and dad. Okay, That's so you're very way. like very close to mom and dad. Yeah. Okay, so there wasn't any like fights with mom or dad growing up, I'm saying. Always never. close. Yeah, never. And it was everybody quite close to mom and dad. Um, yeah, everybody was quite close to is my there, mom and dad. Is there any like sibling that was a bit like the rebel, or would you say that? Yeah, you? definitely. Who was that? Uh, one of my brothers. I okay. don't want to say who. But it's not you. Not me, definitely. You're not the rebel in the family. No, my parents. Uh, mom, I feel like in. Life, you know, your mom and dad, you know, they get older. They, you never know when they're going to die. Yeah. So I would never want to disrespect my mom and dad. Okay. So the, the, you're not the one that they need to worry about, usually. I mean, no. Oh, okay. I'm the one. And um, in terms of, like, your parents, when you were growing up and stuff, how, how, did, how did you get punished? Did you get punished much or not really? Um, when I was younger. Do you younger, remember getting punished for anything? Yeah, what I kind mean, of things were you in trouble for? Like fighting in school. You used to fight? Yeah. With who? Random. <laughs> random people. Like, uh. Why? Just people who I'm, uh, it's just growing up in New York, like, uh, I, I didn't want them to know I was Muslim or Arab, mm -hmm. so I would I would just have fights in school mm -hmm. because I didn't want them to know I was Muslim. I, a lot of people, so when I was in elementary school and middle school, mm -hmm. people knew I was Arab and Muslim, mm -hmm. and I used to get bullied for that. Mm -hmm. so once was I that asked, around 9-11 or was it? Yeah, it was around 9-11. Okay, around 9-11. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then in high school, mm -hmm. that's when, like, people just assumed I was uh, Hispanic, Puerto Rican. Okay. They just assumed it, and I just went along. I'm like, okay. Okay. And then some people would almost find out, like, I'm, I'm Muslim, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to. I was the only Muslim in the school, okay. but I didn't want no one to find out. So for me, to make them not think of me being Muslim or Arab, I would literally just, anybody that tries to, like, my student would just fight. You know, like, mm -hmm. I would just try to fight with people. So Did instead of people talking about me being Muslim, they would talk about me fighting. Uh, how long did that go on for? Four years. Four years. So how old were you when you started, like, kind of being Hispanic and then... 14 years old. Up until? Like 18. 18. So quite a big amount of time. Yeah. Okay, so most people didn't know that you were Muslim? 
Uh, no one, no one knew I was Muslim. No one knew you. Even my bestest friend in my high school didn't know. Like, I would go to his house. Yeah. And he would come to my house. I, I wouldn't let him go to my house because my house has, like, Mecca, mm -hmm. Kaaba. He would know automatically and, and he would you, tell everybody. So your name was always Adam, so it never gave anything away. Yeah, so and, it sounds yeah. kind of American. Adam, and yeah. and uh, Saleh, no one really clocked on with that one. No one really clocked Saleh. Like, some people were actually, like, call Saleh, Saleh. And I'm just like, yeah. nah. It's supposed to be Santiago, <laughs> but it's like, you know, like, yeah, like it's, um, I always got away, like, I found a way it. out of it. Yeah. And so, how did that affect your relationship with God? It affected it a lot, because, you know, even during, like, well, honestly, like, I mean, I don't regret nothing, but it definitely affect, like, I feel sad sometimes, like, why, why did I have to hide my religion? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if people would, if people would, but I know deep down inside, like, I hid it for a reason, to keep myself safe and keep my family safe. Yeah. Because before... People used to bully my sisters. Mm. They used to know where I live. They used to come to my family. We were the only Muslims in the whole neighborhood around that time. So yeah. I was... You knew your intentions were... Yeah, I knew my intentions were pure. And mm. then it just sometimes I felt bad because during, during Ramadan, you know, you have to fast. Mm -hmm. And then one time we had like a pizza party. And then uh, and then like I, I was fasting. And then I was like, damn, like everyone's Adam, you can eat? You can eat? And then like... And then, you know, I have to eat in front of them. Mm -hmm. I have to eat so yeah. I can make it look like I'm not Muslim. Yeah. So there was one time where I literally ate pizza. I literally ate pizza just to prove that, like, you uh, like I was just eating a donut. That makes total sense. Yeah. And then, but how did you find having like two identities? Like, what was it like Adam on the street compared to Adam? Oh Adam? man, it was it was hard. Honestly, it was hard. Like me on the street was just I was a whole complete. Excuse my language. I was a whole complete asshole. Be honest, yeah. Yeah, and then like like at home, like, I would pray at home. I'll pray. You can even ask my mom or dad. Like I used to like. Yeah. And then when I go to school, I was like. Just a whole, a complete different person. Okay. But nobody knew. Nobody. And my mom and dad's brothers, nobody, nobody know what so I was doing. your family had no idea about the Adam on road. No, they and didn't And the know. on road people had no idea about Adam at home. They had no clue. So who could you be yourself around? Who Was there anybody in your life in that point that you could be yourself around or not really? Myself. Just you? Just myself, yeah. Mm. So it, you, it was... Nobody understood? Nobody that. knew nothing at all. Like, I mean, yeah, my family knew I was fighting and yeah. stuff, but... It was, they just thought it was like, oh, people bullying me and fighting, but it was just, it was just me just fighting people because I didn't want them to know. So there wasn't yeah. anybody that you could totally, like, express, like, nobody knew the real Adam? No, nobody, did I didn't Did you express. know the real Adam? Which one did you prefer? I, I, I knew, I know. Which, I mean, which one did you prefer? I preferred me at home, and, yeah. and like, that, that's me, honest, that's me, the truth, me, Muslim, Adam. The yeah. other, the other Adam was, was, like, it's a lie, like, I'm just literally lying and I had to lie. Then lie again the next day. And then yeah. it, it just didn't feel good to know, like, I'm going to school to lie. Like, What were some of the worst habits that you picked up from the on-road, Adam? Just lying and you start believing your lies. And then you start, like, thinking that's the truth. But it's not. It's yeah. actually the lie. Can you think of any times where you literally were, like, close to getting caught? And how did you, like, work your way out of that? Oh, man. I, I remember one time they... It was, like, report card day and they wanted my mom to come in mm. but mom was hijab so I was like no I want my dad to come in but they they always insisted to like my mom to come in my mom and then I was just like oh no mom is she's actually in Yemen she's not here right now she's away yeah. and then uh, I would force my dad and even my mom would try to come I'm gonna go see where you're going I'm yeah. like, no 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 I would tell I felt bad I'm telling her don't go don't go like you just stay home relax Yeah. and I'm uh my dad would go and stuff and then when did all of this unravel when did it when did the when did it come out that you were Muslim and stuff? It, it came out in my my senior year. It was my last year mm -hmm. of of high school, mm -hmm. and then um, I had like I was having these street fights mm -hmm. that was going on like was going on, on the internet, mm -hmm. and there was the dean. You guys know what's the dean, right? Mm -hmm. So the dean he was like he was always so against me. He knew that I was Muslim. He was the only one that knew that I was Muslim. Ah, okay. So he had your data and stuff. So he, he knew had my data. He knew mm -hmm. I was Muslim. Okay. And he would even come sometimes to. Like the school, the classroom, mm -hmm. and like be like, like, hey, I'm just trying to find out everyone's like nationality. Mm -hmm. And it's like, put your hand if you're African American, put your hand up if you're Hispanic. And then I put my hand up in Hispanic, and he's like, Adam, put your hand down. You're not Hispanic. Like he would try to put me on the spot. So I, me and him always had like. So like, he would go out of his way to try and humiliate. Yes, yeah, he okay. would go out of his way trying to like, out trying with. to like expose me and mm -hmm. like like for everybody, you know, mm -hmm. like come on, you know. Yeah, then, then, when um, you're a kid, that. Yeah, I, I was I was young. Like, why are you yeah. doing? It? And he knew, like, it would put me in a position where I would get bullied, where I would get like, mm -hmm. you know, people would just come make fun of me. I didn't want to go through that. Mm -hmm. So one time he, I got in trouble for fighting, and then he insisted, like, my mom has to come. 
my mom has to come know or else mm -hmm. like the police, I'm calling the police. And then um, I let my mom go, mm -hmm. we went, I ended up going. And then my mom showed up to the school. Mm -hmm. then I was trying to leave the school. I was like, damn, I'm gonna let my mom just go alone. I don't want people to see me walking with her. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I was like, fuck this shit. I'm gonna just walk with my, my mom. Mm -hmm. So I, I walked with my mom in the hallway. And then we, we, it, with the, during the busy high school day? You so walked? it wasn't busy. Okay. But then when the dean came out, he made me walk to busy in front of everybody. And everyone was like, oh, I was Muslim? Yo, he's Muslim. Like, oh, he's Muslim. Yo, like, he's Muslim. Yo. He goes, look at his mom. Like, they're just like, oh, like, like, uh, it started coming out. And I'm just like, damn, this dude is making me go mm. pass through every, this is my last year. Mm. You know, I just, I, my last year to, I'm graduating this mm. year. And then we sit down and I'm, I'm already like, like angry. Like, this dude just made me go through the whole hallways. Mm. 5,000 students in the school. Yeah. We go to the office. And once we get in the office, he's already like, you know, he's happy. Like, he's, he's, Smug. that people knew already I'm Muslim. Mm. And then, mom doesn't know no English. You know, mm. mom, mom is very like, very old school, like okay. she'll, she's a type, she'll be, she'll beg the teacher, like please just give him an A, you know, yeah. like if she's a lady, mm -hmm. if she's a lady principal or something, she'll hug the lady, like she'll give her a kiss and be like, please just, you know, give my son an A, like, you know, mm -hmm. so she doesn't really she's know much, person? she's very soft, okay. very soft, so she doesn't speak much English, mm -hmm. so the dean was like, kind of like mimicking her, making fun of her, like when she's like, like what she's doing, mom, I don't call it embarrassing, it's just that's what, like... She's just being sweet. That she's being old school, yeah. you know, it's cool, you don't make fun of... You know, so he started like, I, I, I couldn't believe what he was doing, I was like, wow, this dude is really making fun of my mom, like... Mm. And then even my mom noticed it, like, mm. he's making fun of my I like that my mom, like, what the hell, like... And then I waited, and he went to, like, the, to the assistant principal, and started, like, talking about my mom, like, mm. oh, she's saying this, like... Now, I just kept, like, my anger was, I was getting really angry to the mm. point where I just punched his computer. I just punched the computer and then his computer fell off and then I looked at him like, yo, uh, make fun of my mom and then he came to me like, to, like grabbed my shoulder and then from then I, I punched him in his face and then mom started like screaming. You punched the dean in his face? Yeah, I, I punched the dean in the face <laughs> and then okay. I'm, uh, yeah. and then my mom started I'm, uh, like crying and just, and just going crazy and screaming and then, no. then I just ran off. The security was like chasing me, I, I ran away, I ran home mm -hmm. and then my other brother came and then the cops came and then from then I got expelled. Oh, okay. From that school, so oh. I didn't go to that school no more. Where did you graduate then? Where did you end up? I graduated from Islamic school. So, mom, so you went from that extreme yeah. to yeah. So I ended up going to like an Islamic school in in Brooklyn, mm. and I ended up graduating uh, in 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 an Islamic school. So has it always been like a back and forth between like two extremes? Like one is extremely Islamic and the other one Western. Has it all, has that been a long running saga yeah. in Adam's world? Yes, I'm not going to lie, yes. Yeah, that's been a thing. Yeah. And so, you know, like, your Muslim lifestyle, like, the family and stuff, would they be surprised if they met the Western Adam? And would the Western Adam be surprised if they met the Muslim, if you're being honest? Oh, they would, they would be really surprised. I'd probably get, like, my ass whooped. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, naturally. Yeah, and yeah. That's, there's nothing. It's just... The thing is, you've got a very good relationship with your mum and dad, but there's still some conditions, like with everybody, there's still some conditions. They raised you to be Muslim, right? Yes, yeah, and, of course. And they only know you to be Muslim. Yes. But the environment was very Western. Yes. And not even just Western, you had to be anti-Muslim. Yes. So having those conflicts, does it make you a bit anxious about being truly yourself around everybody? It does sometimes, yeah, I do. That's like, it, it made me feel... Like yeah, I, I would feel like anxiety. Like I would just, I, I felt really like, I'll get sweaty. Like mm. I, you know, I didn't want people to know I was Muslim at all. You know. Like. So then going forward, how did you make friends with this the hybrid? You've got these two people in one, yeah. So how do you meet people? Like let's start with friendships. When it comes to friendships, have you managed to meet friends that know both sides and now get you, or is it always Any one or the other? They didn't know. No one ever knew both mm. because I, I would look at it this way: if anyone knows both. I'm, ex I'm, ex I'm ex they're going to know the truth. Mm. Some, all it takes is one person to know. So I was not going to tell nobody. So were your circles completely different? like them? Completely different. And then would your personality change a little bit? Yes. What did you notice as the biggest difference between one and the other when you flipped? What was the biggest difference between Western Adam and Home Adam? Western Adam was more like violent. Like I'm more like, I'm a, I'm a street fight shoe. I'm okay. a, like I was more like... Uh, rough? Yeah, super rough and aggressive. Mm. Like... Mm. I'm, I'm a fight you like yeah more like 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 down yeah. And uh, the Muslim Adam, what is he like? 
Muslim Adam is, you know, I, I love my mom and dad. I, I kiss their heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was more like, you know, giving them what they want because, you know, my parents, they're much more older. Mm -hmm. So I always, I, like, I, I love my parents. I'll do anything to mm -hmm. make sure they're, like, to, to make sure they're safe, they're good. I'll do anything for my parents. So that's like, would you say that Adam at home is like a stand-up guy, like someone respectable and, yes. yeah. And then the street Adam is a little bit more volatile. Yes. And then when you first had that experience of going down the high school when everybody was looking at would you say that was your first experience of hate? No, I experienced hate when I was younger, in 9-11. Oh, when I was okay. around like, like nine, eight, nine years old. And like you when, got the hate wrong? Yeah, I, 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 the most hate was then. What happened? When the whole, like, literally, mm -hmm. I, I can look out my window and see oh, the Twin Towers. In New I forget, you were actually in New York. No, yeah, I, I was born so and raised in So you were in, New York. in the line of fire. Yeah, I was literally, in, uh, ah. my school was like 15 yeah. minutes away, and the towers were so big, you can you can see it, like, because through the window. Because even in England and other places, the attacks went up against Muslims. So I can't imagine, what what was it like yeah. for, for you in New York? Was it even, like, uh, it was, times uh, 100? Oh, it was, it was really bad, like, mm -hmm. really, really bad. Because I, especially since I was younger and like, mm. like at the time I I knew what the twin towers were. But mm. I never like I've always seen I I've always called it the big buildings. Mm. You know like I always but we see it at the windows the big buildings, mm. and then um then we seen like the you know we seen it like the black smoke coming to our school. Then, then so the you whole, saw it from your school. Yeah, we saw it in the whole everyone is panicking. I thought the world was ending. I'm like what the hell? Like uh, this, we had no school for like yeah maybe like three weeks, mm. and then the moment we came, I came back to school. You know, like the whole Osama bin Laden thing. I started being, I was, and I was the only Muslim in that school. Mm. And then I was, I was being called Osama bin Laden's son. Like, then I didn't. Matter of fact, I didn't know I was like Muslim, Muslim until that. <laughs> so you realized yeah, that. like I was like, wow. Like then yeah. people just started like, people used to like, they they started just going bully me. Um, mm. they used to lie to me like, oh, let's play sports. And then when I play sports, like they used to tackle me like mm. American football, they step on my throat. One time they oh. stepped on my throat. I couldn't breathe. Like literally, I, like like I was. I thought I was gonna die. I couldn't breathe. And then the teachers wanted me to do nothing. They were just too scared to even yeah. like to do anything. The only time was like my sister was in my school. She was she would defend me and hit mm. some of the boys. Oh, yeah. Your older sister. Yeah, my older sister. Yeah. And um, so then you know, experiencing hate from such a young age. Do you think it uh, prepared you well for this lifestyle that you chose? Yeah, I think it definitely prepared me 100%. How has it prepared you? How do you now respond to hate? Because uh, as somebody who's in the limelight, no matter what you do, you're going to get some hate. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's equal amount of love and hate. Um, but from like from what the tiny bit I know, you seem to be quite like, oblivious to it. You kind of seem to get on with your life. How do you now handle hate, hate considering? I, I mean, I went through I went through so many like adversities in my life to the point where now it's like if anyone. If I see anyone hate it, like I do, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I know I get a lot of hate every, mm -hmm. like almost every single day. Mm -hmm. I see it, but it's just like I look at it and I'm just like, you can't. I'm, I'm not. What am I gonna do? I'm not gonna like react with hate. Mm -hmm. if you can't. If I react with hate, that's not like, that's not how a true, like a true, not even a true Muslim, a true human, true human. a true human would react. Mm -hmm. You know, with hate. If someone's hating on you. I'm not gonna react with hate unless we're outside and someone you know yeah. touches me. Then it's gonna be yeah. But, um, but day to day, does it affect your mental health, or have you been become quite strong and robust against hate? Sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it does. I'm of like, course, yeah. damn. Like these people don't really know. Like they, they don't know me. They're saying all this about me, but they really don't know me. Like they're like, oh, I miss the old Adam when he used to do those videos and social experiments and those. Uh, but now he's just changed. But when in reality, like I feel like those days, I was like, I, I wasn't as close to to, to to God. I wasn't as close to my parents. At that time, I feel like now I'm way more close with my parents. Like I, I gave my parents, mm -hmm. you know, a house when, when they used to live mm -hmm. in the projects. I gave my dad, you know, his own car. He used to have a car, like 1993 car mm -hmm. that had no AC, mm -hmm. no heater. So I feel like now I'm a much, I'm a much better person now. Mm -hmm. But like, when I, people, what people see in the videos, like the videos before, like the social experience before, mm -hmm. like. I can't really upload the social experience. I, I feel like I did everything. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like I, I did. You've done your part. You feel like you've done. Your part. I mean, there's not many more ideas that I can do. Mm -hmm. You know, like and no one really watches YouTube anymore, yeah. like that. No one really goes like, hey, let me go to my subscriptions and see you watch. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really do YouTube. If, if I upload on, on YouTube, I upload for fun. It's not like I'm uploading for money or even for people. To, no one watches YouTube much mm -hmm. no more. I'm focused on like boxing right now. So now you you have to go away from what they're expecting of you, and they yes. then give you hate for it. Yes. Okay. I don't know what they expect like of me right now, you know. So, 
where, wherever you go, just seems like there seems to be a theme, like whatever Adam does, there's some hate involved. So when you were the Muslim guy growing up, there was some hate from the yes. peers. When you were the Western on-road Adam, there would be hate from your home. Like if yes. they knew, there'd be. And now when it comes to being an adult, uh, whatever direction you go, whether it's boxing, YouTube and stuff, yeah. there seems to be some level of hate. But you, you then did choose a career path that would expose you to a lot of people. Yes. And by that exposure, you're going to attract a little bit more negativity as well. What made you want to choose? Why did you want to be famous? My, like what people don't know, like even like the other day, like I uploaded TikTok. I was like, you know, me, me growing up, like me being raised, growing up in the projects, made me you know come to dubai and be mm -hmm. here in dubai like you know having a boxing match in the biggest arena like mm -hmm. and then all the comments like li if you you never lived in the project you never this and that mm -hmm. you know people like because i've been in the game for so long for, for in youtube for like 10 years mm -hmm. people tend to like like i'm older than them you know mm -hmm. I, I did like i i wouldn't lie about growing in the, like growing up. that's not something i'm so they probably caught on to you when you're already successful yeah yeah kind okay. of yeah so like me me, I, I feel like me growing up in, in a project, you know, it, it did, it made me who I am, mm -hmm. it made me who I am today, because when, when I'm living in the projects, I, I'm, I'm hungry, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I'm not talking about hungry as in food, I, I'm hungry to like, yo, I want it, like, there's gunshots going on, mm -hmm. and my mom's like screaming, getting scared, mm -hmm. uh, my nieces and nephews are in the house, they're kicking the door, so I'm like, I need to do something to get the hell up out of here, you know, like. So you have to dream big. Yeah, I, I, you have to have big dreams, I'm like, yo, like, I, I need to, mm -hmm. you know, what did I maybe be a professional boxer? That's what I was my plan to be a professional it was, boxer. It was always in the yeah. plan. Yeah. And you know, like your peers from like the project, do you know how they're doing comparative to you? They're all they're all in jail. They're all in jail. Okay. Like they all like I, I know they're. So that's what could have been. The that, that's what could have been me. So had you not chosen this extreme version of like success, that could have been the alternative. Jail yeah. was a very realistic alternative. Jail was a very realistic because that's when I switched. My, my life around when I had the fight with the dean, mm -hmm. I ended up he ended up charging like pressing oh, charges, pressed charges against me, okay. and he made a bunch of more people press charges against me that mm -hmm. that I fought and that I knocked out, mm -hmm. and I, I ended up having like I had two felonies, two misdemeanors, and I was only seventeen years old, and they sent me to Rikers Island. I don't know if you heard of it, mm -hmm. so I got I got sent to Rikers Island until I got bailed out, and that's when like I flipped my whole life upside down. My family took me to Islamic school, mm -hmm. or else if I continued to go on that path. That one week in Rikers would have been one year. Then it would have been it's ten years. It was preparing you for jail. Yes, yeah, so it was preparing me for yeah, jail. Okay. Even my other friends were getting arrested. Mm -hmm. And now my friends, like, when I look up their names, because mm -hmm. I know their birthdays too. I remember yeah. I used to celebrate their birthdays. Mm -hmm. And then when I look up their names and birthdays, I'm inmate, like NYC inmate. I, I, I see this as 16 years in jail. I swear to God. Mm -hmm. Like, my friends is 16 years. The other one is doing 20. He's not, he's not coming out to 2032. Like the year 2003, I'm like, wow. Like, so that's how you would have been. That's how, you not, that's, if I would have been hanging out around with them, yeah, I would have been around. I would have been around that kind of. So, scene. because of school was lots of fights and stuff. Choosing a normal nine to five wouldn't have been enough to get you out of the projects. Nah, choosing nine to five. Choosing nine to five would have been like, I mean, yeah, I was, I was, I was still, um, uh, I was working with like my cousins in the store, mm -hmm. being a delivery boy. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever but I that make. wouldn't have got you way out nah, of the project. Nah, okay. So nothing. you had no choice but to dream big. I, I needed to dream big. Even yeah. like going to school, I was just like, I just going to school. Yeah, it was a good. It was an option, but like you gotta wait long. You yeah. know, wait so long. And I'm like, and at the time I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just let me just do YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I did YouTube for fun. And, and how old were you when you did YouTube? I was I was 18. 18. So right after. So it was like 10 school, years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, right after school. And you did your first one at 18. Yeah, I did my first video when and I was when 18. When did you first go big? When did you go viral? Uh, when I first I started making um, uh, actually there was a contest for the Ellen show mm -hmm. and then uh, it was like it's called Ellen's Dance There mm -hmm. where I had to like dance behind strangers without, without them knowing mm -hmm. and then um, I was like yo Scootish I'm gonna do it like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty let Westernized Adam come mm -hmm. out you know mm -hmm. I'll do it and then the video I had like 4 million views in a matter of like like a week. And how old were you at this point? And, and I was 18, 19. Still, so brand new to YouTube. Basically. It was brand, brand new. new. Okay. So this was like my third video. So it didn't video. take long for you to go no. future. No. Okay. That's why, that's why I always, I'm always grateful. And I'm always blessed. You know, I always like, I'm not the type. That's why I'm, if anyone met me before, like, I, mean, I don't like saying it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm always humble. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm always like, oh, very, I always, I'm very. never like a dickhead to, yeah, to ever, like yeah. to, to anybody. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know how it is to feel like at the lowest, you know, so like you were just 18 years old and you just tried YouTube, yeah. And for some reason, it went up to four million 
views. It went, went to four million views because at the time that it was like Ellen was so huge at the oh. time, and her, everyone is uploading she's still videos. Big. She's still big. I mean, she's yeah, still big. So imagine back then, yeah. Yeah, and she made this contest publicly, and then like, and then I ended up getting a call from uh, from Ellen's producers, oh. and then I, I was one of like the winners that got to go on her show, and then. And you were eighteen. And I was 18, yeah, yeah. I was turning 19. I remember it was May 2012, and I was in school at the time mm -hmm. too. I had finals coming up, like my whole like finals. Mm -hmm. And they called me like, hey, we wanna fly you to LA. Like, mm -hmm. we wanna fly you to LA this week, which is like in like three days. Man, in my head, I'm like, holy shit, like I have, I have so many exams I gotta go take. I was like, what? I was like, fuck this, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the Allen Show. Mm -hmm. And then I, I left, I went to the Allen Show. I failed, I mean, my exams wasn't failed, but it was like no, like... No, NA, like basically. Yeah, NA, like yeah. nothing, all of them, all classes. And then I'm, uh, I actually got discharged from my school. Mm. Like, they just kicked me out of school because okay. I never showed up. Right. And then um, I gained, like, 50,000 followers from the Ellen Show. Then I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to capitalize. I'm going to continue going. 50,000 followers on YouTube at the time? On YouTube, subscribers, oh, okay. yeah. Okay, fine, then yeah. I made another video, like, helping the homeless. Like, I, I was one of the first people to, to, like, do videos helping the homeless. Okay. I mean, I was already helping the homeless regardless, but I was like, you know what? Let me record this. Let that be. That's when YouTubers started, like, helping the homeless. I remember Channing Tatum, he yeah. shared it on his Facebook. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, uh, Wiz Khalifa, he um, shared it on his Facebook, too. Facebook and, was and popping. And you were 18, 19 at this point. I was 18, 19 and years old. And these celebrities were sharing your... They were sharing with me, like, wow, this is so inspirational. Like, I was one of the first, me and my friend, and uh, Sheikh Akbar. And how did you Akbar. feel about that? I felt like, wow, like, this is, like, like changing the world, you know? I felt like... It's a good feeling. I love helping people, yeah. you know? And you know when you are doing these helping videos, if you're being true to yourself, is it to help or is it to portray an image? What would you say is a genuine... Because it might be a combination of things. Because remember, yeah. you've got so many... You've got two parts. There's two atoms, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So when you do these types of videos and stuff, which atom are you tapping into and which audience are you are you tapping into no, no. and what for? E even without, even without the cameras? Both atoms are like that? Both atoms are like both that. Both atoms. Okay, yeah, so that's atoms. one similarity between both of them. Is yeah. Would you say both On Road and Muslim Adam are both kind? Would you say? They're both kind, yeah. Okay. But you don't want to push westernized Adam because I, I would I will get really like like if I like I feel threatened mm -hmm. or something I will I will get really violent. So Western Adam, we're we'll calling yeah. Western Adam. Is that, is that right? I'm yeah. calling him, or yeah. On Road, which Adam? Yeah, on road, road, road Adam, right? Yeah. So, Road Adam, when he's pushed, um, even now, when Road Adam is pushed, how does he respond? I mean, even the, the other day, literally, we were in Dubai, yeah. just having dinner, you know, regularly mm -hmm. having dinner. We, we, me and my friend Slim, we go, we, me and Slim, we don't, we, don't try, we don't look for trouble at all, you know, people, yeah. they see us on the internet, and, and they think we're like, you know, soft, they see us doing boxing, like, oh, he's just a bitch, he's just a puss off. But mm. to me, it's just like, I never give that attention. Mm. You know, I never give it any attention. It's like, I, I just look at them as like, damn, man, like, I, I feel bad. Like, they mm. actually like, like, why they got to be so hatred on people? Yeah. Like, be they happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they're like, damn, they're going all out. Like, mm. they, something must be going on with their life to actually hate on. It's like. And, but you know, that's you, Adam, as rational Adam, understanding that. But you know, when you turn to road Adam, uh, which is like a switch. It's not something you can actually help. We all do this. We unconsciously all have different personalities. Yeah. And um, when we're triggered, it, uh, in your case, you're triggered and you turn into Road Adam. But Road Adam is a 14-year-old. And um, what happens is, as an adult, they're usually formed as in children. Yeah. But as an adult, when they're triggered, you go back to the age that they were formed. Oh, and wow. so when you are triggered and you're 28 years old and you've got a lot to lose at this age yeah. yeah you've got a lot to lose but if someone triggers you you adopt the brain of road adam who's 14 years old uh -huh. would you say there's any truth to that that sometimes you do act more impulsively even though you know all this like logically i, I know when that fight took place and stuff and i know when you explain it you're totally rational you're totally yeah. aware of what could have happened and what shouldn't have happened yeah. but in the moment did you behave like adult adam or was it road adam I behave like Road Adam, mm -hmm. and it's natural. Yeah, I mean, like if I it only it, to get Road Adam, you, I need to get like you're gonna need to get me. I'm to always happy. I'm a smiley yeah. person. Like you need to like come to my like that's what they were doing. You know, these mm -hmm. people they came to my face. Yeah. It was even on Slim. They were coming to my face. Yeah, and they were just like 
and I was trying to close the window of my car. Mm-hmm. I was trying to close the window. So you're trying to be mature, Adam. Yeah, I was trying to be mature. But they Adam. wanted Road Adam. Yeah, and they I, got I guess Road Adam? No, they didn't know about Road Adam. <laughs> yeah, I let yeah, them know about, Road, know about Road Adam. You let them know about Road Adam. Does that happen in life? Does that tend to happen sometimes when people trigger you? And do you sometimes think, why did I do that? No, nah, because it takes a lot for it me to. Lot. It takes a lot for me to come out. Like, so if I come out, I'm like, I, it came out for a reason. Okay, so it makes sense. Yeah, okay. like, like, I, it's not like I'm doing it. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Why did mm-hmm. I do that? Mm-hmm. Like, if I do that, then like, it, they definitely deserve. Okay. They de- definitely but deserve. But that road, Adam. Do you think he'll ever go, or do you think that if pushed, it'll always come out? I mean, it got to be pushed on some yeah. crazy shit. Like, like, I, I, even like a few years ago, someone tried to steal my dad's jacket. Mm-hmm. You know, then road, Adam came out. <laughs> then I, I. I what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm I'm beat his ass up. Yeah. You know, I'm so, I know I don't condone mm-hmm. anybody to do this. I even tell my nieces and nephews yeah. who are young. I have seven nephews, eight nieces. I tell mm-hmm. them, never, like never hit anyone. I don't I don't condone that. Yeah. But I should be saying that to myself. But mm-hmm. to me, that's that's just. But that's what unconscious personalities yeah. do. Once they're tapped into it, they take over your actual yeah. personality. So yeah. it's like where will come over you, yeah. and he'll take control of your thoughts, your actions, and behaviors. Yeah. And then you can rationalize and go back to who you are. But you've yeah. got millions of these. Everybody does. We all have lots of different personalities yeah. like that. So um, the reason why I ask a lot about childhood is that essentially your self-esteem is formed. In childhood, and there's three things that form your self-esteem. It's the love from your parents, which you. It sounds like you got a good, stable amount of love from yeah. your home. Do you believe that? Yes. Yeah, and and, and the other thing is doing outdoing the same-sex parent. Now, in your case, do you feel like you were able to, not in a competitive way, but were you able to achieve more than what your father was able to achieve in his lifetime? Yes. And do you think it makes you proud that you're able to do that for him and now give back to him and stuff? Yeah. So, in those two regards, it's perfect like your self-esteem is perfect and the final thing is your peers now in terms of your peers you seem to outperform would you say you've outperformed all your peers what do you mean like my friends your friends that you grew up with not oh, now grew up. yeah and grew yes. up with. so yeah. in those t- types of things your self-esteem is going to be quite strong yeah it's going to be quite strong so if anybody else oh. in your position because of the mum love was there you outperform the same sex parent and you're doing a lot better than a lot of peers your self-esteem is extremely it should be really, really strong. Uh-huh. The only thing that ke- is going to be a bit of a burden on your self-esteem is the fact that you had to be somebody else in order to get acceptance. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And as a result of being somebody else in order to get acceptance, as in any kind of connection you form with people, they won't get to know you in entirely. And, as, and that will make... A friendship's a bit difficult, but in particular, romantic relationships very difficult. Yeah. And can you talk me through what your relationship with women has been like in this time? I mean, what has I don't, what is I, a typical relationship? Not necessarily one particular person. Just from if we take from eighteen to twenty eight, last ten years. Yeah. Um, what is the typical relationship with women? Like, how would you describe the typical relationship? So, for instance, I might say uh, I get attached really quickly, and then I end it really quickly, and then uh, and then I move on. Or it might be some people who are just have get married, like get straight yeah. away one person, they invest yeah. in them, and that's it. And others just stay single. What would you say is your? What does a typical relationship with women look like for you? I mean, it, it's different now than what it is like a few you years tell me ago. About the evolution of it? Yeah, I mean, like when I was when I was eighteen. I mean, I've only had like three real, like you can say, what rela- relationships. Uh-huh. None of them were like on the internet. The first one was, the first one was like a high school. Like, wasn't really not. It was like Ooh, a yeah. fake one. It wasn't really a real one. Like, okay, would you discount that now? When you look- I mean, you can't discount the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but she was there? She, she was there for me. Yeah, yeah okay. she was there for me. Um, uh, and the second one was, um, I, w- I, like, I, I was um, like, I was doing YouTube at the time. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really known much yet. Mm-hmm. But it was like 2014, 2015. And then we were like, you know, we were like in love. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess you could say that's the first time I was like in love. And you were, uh, you were 2015, you were how old? I was like 21, 22. 21, okay. Yeah. And you're in love. Yeah, I was like in love and uh-huh. you know just doing everything for her, you know, like uh-huh. you know t- going to college, pick her up from school, uh-huh. you know, taking stuff. But I never really I never really want I never really like posting uh-huh. my my Relation. partner. I, I don't I, I don't like doing it. I know, how, I know how ruthless people can be, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I, I, and I don't, it's not for everybody. This this yeah. YouTube world. Yes, it's not, for, it's, it's not for it's not for everybody. everybody. They yeah. people the internet is ruthless, you know. Uh-huh. And, and like 
I, I can go through it, I feel like, but I don't want them to go through that. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather just, you just chill, do your thing. I got you, yeah. you know? Yeah. The type of thing. I mean, it, unless you, if you want to, uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to let them know beforehand. Like, look, mm -hmm. you're going to you're you're gonna get a lot of, like, people are going to hate on you. Yeah. Just because just uh, you're my girl, mm -hmm. people are going to hate on you regardless. Yeah, you period. Know? People are going to make up lies. People are going to DM you saying some uh, crazy stuff. Yeah. People are going to, I don't know, you know, people just, it, the internet is a crazy world. Mm -hmm. So that's why I never and really. So how long were you two together? That one. That one we're together for like almost almost a year. Okay, and um, what was your what, what what would you say you were like as a boyfriend back then? Were you a good boyfriend? Um. Or did you have like no? I was. Yeah, a lot to work on. What would you say? You no, were? I, I was I was good. I mm -hmm. feel like um, uh, I was really like I, I treat them like how I, how I treat my family. Okay. You know. So, so yeah. what would you say like you is your biggest strength in that relationship? What was one of the things that you were quite confident that you did well. Oh, I remember always, always like being, always being there and having a good time. Always mm -hmm. making sure every day is a fun day. Okay. You know, yeah. So you're good, yeah. It's like always yeah. fun with you. Yeah. Okay, and then from 22, uh, what was the connection like with women? So then, we we broke up mm -hmm. because, I mean, I think I think it's so stupid because, you know, there's different sects of oh, Islam. Oh, Islam, yeah. So like... She was... She, she was actually... Uh, Shia? Shia, yeah, okay. Shia. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't, I don't mind. I mean, yeah, yeah, you Shia, don't. But for them, I, it might be Muslim. Shia. I look at it as you Muslim, like I, I, yeah. you know. So her parents, yeah, and uh, and she, her parents didn't like accept me being like mm, Sunni. Fair. But at the time, I was just like, like it's not even about like mm -hmm. Shia, uh, uh, Sunni, and then like I don't really want to even get into that. I love you for you, you know. Yeah. You're Muslim, I'm Muslim. Like mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. And then it didn't it make like, sense for you. Yeah, they were just so seriously on it. Like okay. it was, it was like like they oh, were, they were putting pressure on you. They were putting a lot at of pressure. At 22 years old? At 22, like, okay. putting a lot of pressure. And I was... So you decided to... I know. So, just, I, so I ended up breaking up where I said, mm -hmm. like, it can't it can't work out. But it wasn't... Right. Was it a volatile breakup? Or did you both understand why you had to break up? Um, I mean, we both understood. Because even her, like... I, like, I, I wanted to marry her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to marry her. But mm -hmm. she was like, hey, my family's not going to accept. They know you're... They know you're... Uh, uh, they know you're sunny. That you need to... Be Shia, my family's Shia, they would never mm -hmm. like, accept you. Then I'm just like, I'm like, what? Like, what do I gotta do? She's like, can you, like, I'm like, how do I, like, how do, I do, do that? I'm, I'm like, I don't even care about that. I have nothing against anybody. Yeah. We're all Muslim but at the end of the day, you know? Like, you. But it was just like, I guess I kind of got, like, turned off. Yeah, fair. So and then that relationship ended, and did you end hating each other, or was it more neutral? What was it like, if you're being honest? It was, it was, it was cool. It, it was, was cool. Like, I, was, I was so cool with her, like, you know? Okay. And then after that, you also at 22 years old would have had a lot of fame yeah let's be realistic you would have had a lot of fame yeah. and when you have a lot of fame at a very young age you have a, a power privilege and yeah? you have a privilege of power and that involves you know you can speak to most women and they're going to reply yeah because of your name and stuff like that and now being 22 years old with that much power do you feel like every time you meet a girl do you feel like she's disposable you can meet somebody else and this is it or do you get committed or do you feel like you get more towards if you're being honest because one of the things with being famous is the um, share amount of women in increases and especially as you get older you're yeah. now 28 when you get to 30 the pool of women will just increase even more so yeah. um, does it make women kind of lose their value in the sense that you feel like every woman you have invested in there's always another 10 that you could also talk to yeah, I, I, I feel like that, yeah, yeah. And that does happen. And how does that affect your commit, like investment when you are talking to one girl? How does it affect it? Knowing that there's always people in the sidelines yeah, waiting to it does wait affect for their it. turn. I, I feel like it's like, like I mean, it does sound messed up, but it's like it is what it is. Yeah. Oh, she's ahead, and I'm like, all right, no, she's now she's ahead. All right, no, she's doing a lot better. Like it's just and it's hard. It's hard, yeah. It's, it's hard. very hard. Yeah, uh, yeah it's because it's hard for the average person, but yeah. when you add fame and notoriety and travel with that, it becomes even worse. Yeah. So how does anybody maintain your intention? Can they, or have, it, have they found it hard? If you're being honest, can people maintain, or does it have to come from you? Do you have to? No, no, no. People can maintain my attention. Mm. Like, it's, it's, it's possible. Yeah. But it's just like, it's hard sometimes finding the white, people think, oh, it's easy, Adam, you get all the girls. Mm -hmm. Oh, you get all the girls, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's it's actually, it's, a lot hard. it's, it's hard. It's, it's harder, I feel like, it's harder. If you had to put all the girls that you have been talking to, interested in relationship, what kind of women do you attract? What kind of women do you attract? Do you attract a more stable, calm, or is she more volatile? Or I, I mean, usually, yeah, I, I, 
women that I that I attract is like stable, mm -hmm. calm. But and, and like I did have a relationship once where I thought they were like stable and calm. Mm -hmm. But that's why I feel like I got kind of like fooled. And did like that in the beginning become more volatile as you? Yes, okay. very. Can you talk to me about that situation? What exactly happened there? In, in the beginning, of, it was it was like I, I was like wow, like this is this is like too good to be true. This mm -hmm. is like you know my like my queen, my princess. You know, calm, everything was normal. Like, and then slowly, like slowly, I just started realizing like very, very uh, aggressive, trying to like you know like one time we we're like hanging out at a lounge or something, and then this mm -hmm. person who was like kind of my partner. Mm -hmm. um, was like, no, let me go beat this bitch up. And then, like, so, a fight was about, I was like, whoa, I, I seen a side that I've never seen, you know? And this was, like, I, I was already with her for, like, three months, and I'm like, whoa, like, like yeah. very, like... So she has that element of Road Adam in her. She has that yeah, Road Adam, red, yeah. old Road Adam. Which, which, I mean, like, were there which any, is normal. Which is, was, were there any red flags before it got to that point? Did you no. notice any kind of... You know, personality traits that may have led to some. My, fr my friends tell me the same. Like, well, you didn't notice any red flags because you know when mm -hmm. I when I introduced you know when I introduced it to my friends, mm -hmm. they were like, whoa, like they don't get like really good vibes. And so I, friends, I, I didn't your get friends didn't get good vibes. No, my friends didn't get no good vibes. How did you vibes. become immune to the red flags? Like, what no, but this was three months in. They right. they didn't meet her until like three months mm -hmm. later. Oh, okay, when you already had feelings. When I already had feelings for her, and like, okay. and I was already like. No, I, got, I, I had feelings. I had feelings for uh -huh. her, and I didn't know. Like, I didn't know at all she was like that mm -hmm. until. So that was the first realization that this. Yeah, like she was about to have a fight, and she just had the road at him, yeah. which, which is okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's okay to have the road at him. Like, mm -hmm. I, I got you. You know. <laughs> but then, it started becoming like. It started becoming adding up, and it mm -hmm. started like, like um, I, I would be asleep sometimes. You know, they check my phone, mm -hmm. and then um, and I found out. Like, not from her. I found out from other people that she's been, like... She's gotten arrested before for, like... Mm -hmm. she, she was in jail before for, like, nine months. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, whoa, like... You know, that's something you got to tell someone yeah. before. And then she ended up confessing, saying, mm -hmm. like, yes, she had to go to court. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then from then, I was like, whoa, this is, like, a big red, red flag. Mm -hmm. And then, like... She, I don't know. She even had people, like... Thre threats. You know, threats. Sometimes she, she would threaten me sometimes, mm -hmm. too. Like, if you break up with me, I'm going to, like bring people to jump you. I'm gonna like poison your drink, you know, stuff where I like I didn't feel safe mm -hmm. at all. It actually took me like four months to break up with her. So you were trying. Like it took me but four months. This person was quite uh, very attached. like very like I, I got dangerous. dangerous. Very dangerous. Like I I, I and I really had to a like, risk. This get a restraining order. Okay. Okay, so yeah. she was quite a difficult person. Very difficult very and difficult person. Didn't really bring no happiness. Like anytime I try to end it nicely, yeah. you know like you're not like did she bring out any road out of, like, did she get a no, part of you? She no, 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 she never like, brought it, out. She never got that kind of, not necessarily aggressive side, but that um, rebellious. You know what it is? Because Road Adam wasn't just aggressive, he was rebellious. Yeah, I mean, he was just a bit of a rebel. And one of the things when you have a, a partner that is so clingy, what it, sometimes it does to people who aren't that way inclined, it can make them more rebellious. And what rebellious looks like in relationships is they start doing what they want to do, even if it offends their partner. And it yeah. can bring out that rebellious side when when you're dating somebody who is a bit volatile. Did you find that you started becoming more autonomous and not listening to her and doing what you wanted to do? Um, and did that ever happen in your relationship? To be honest, I, I was just like I was just scared. <laughs> I, I was scared for my family, like yeah. and like my like like she knew where I live and she yeah. was. You know, saying like like stuff that I was like, oh, come so on. Genuinely scared, not even like. Yeah, no, I was genuinely like, oh, like come okay. on, like because this person is, it was a very dangerous person. They didn't uh, care about the police. Okay. They didn't care like I would even say I'm gonna call the cops and like I'm still gonna get I'm gonna do this to you I'm gonna do that to you uh -huh. and I'm like yo you're an evil ass person. I was screaming, you're evil. You're fuck. You're being fucking evil. What are you saying? Like let yeah. me just I, I want to break up and then like it was very hard. You know, even one time they like. Her mom was even talking to me like, no, please, Adam, just stay. And, and then I'll, I'll get, like, manipulated into staying. Mm -hmm. And I'll stay. Another time they even brought a sheikh, like, a sheikh. Why, why would you like, bring a sheikh? To make sheikh the, is like an imam, like a priest, basically. Yeah, like a priest. Yeah, like, yeah. brought a sheikh to, to make our relationship better. When I, I'm, I'm trying to break up with her. And they're bringing a sheikh to try to make... 
to, to ch- ch- try to make our relationship better. And it was just very, very toxic. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't have nothing against this per- person. I-, I wish them honestly nothing but the best. Like, mm. But the, the relationship was toxic. The relationship was toxic. Man, I wish them honestly nothing but the best. And I really hope they're doing well. Even, not, not to this... Not even just to this, my relationship, even to, this could be even my friends in the past. Like, yeah. I have nothing against them. You don't hold hate. I don't hold no grudges against them. Mm-hmm. If anything, like, they hold grudges against me. They, they've been talking about me on, like, the internet. I never say nothing. Good. Because it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, deep down inside, I, I still love them. Mm-hmm. I still love them. Even though they violated me, they try to, like, end my life. They try to end my career, take yeah. the food off the plate. You know, say so much lies about me. So yeah, you don't hold hate for people that have hate for you. I, I don't hold no hate for mm. people. I don't. People think because I don't say nothing, they think oh Adam hates that person. Mm. Oh my god, like you know this people. I, I feel like sometimes like the internet, like like people love the drama. People yeah. love the circus. Yeah, it's like cool. a circus. Yeah. You know, and, and like only clowns join the circus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not gonna join that circus. I'm gonna stay quiet. I'm gonna do my own thing, mm. my own business with my family. I'm gonna I'm have I have my mom and dad to take care of. Mm. I have nieces and nephews. I have a future wife to have. A world yeah, I have my own world. I'm not gonna go into that world yeah. where like people that hate me because of essentially win by getting your anger yes. out. Yeah. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah. But you know, just when it comes to this particular person and this thing, um, when it comes to choosing relationships and falling in love and stuff, we always think we're gonna choose somebody who's ideal for us. Um, but the reality is, we actually end up with people who are familiar. Now, the problem with familiarity is sometimes what's familiar isn't what's good for you. Yeah. So you grew up, you said from the projects, yes. yeah? And uh, you grew up also, uh, you, were, you were rowdy and rebellious and so on and so forth. Yeah. And so that world of kind of rebellious behavior and hood behavior yeah. isn't foreign to you. Like, no. is it, yeah, from no, growing no, up. It's now, normal to me. Like, I, see, yeah, I, I can tolerate that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's cool. It's totally normal. Yeah, like, yeah. And yeah. it's totally normal. And it's normalized. It's not foreign. Now, the problem when it comes to selecting partners is that even though it's not, it's familiar, it's probably not ideal for the person you are now. And now the person you are now is far more put together and your lifestyle is a lot more calm yes. and together. And the next generation won't be in the product. Yes. Um, but you're familiar and comfortable with that because you grew up with it. Yeah, yes. you totally grew up with it. So what we now have to do is kind of break the cycle of familiarity because what is normal to you isn't what's good for you. Mm-hmm. And going forward, especially with the lifestyle that you're going towards and the kind of, I mean, you're sitting here in Dubai, you've traveled the world, um, you've definitely changed the generation, your kids won't be growing up in the project. The kind of hood behavior, the rebellious and all that stuff, all of those skills aren't really going to be useful, but they are going to be familiar. And so you're going to mm-hmm. be attracted to them. So you just have to be mindful when selecting a partner that you find what you actually need, not necessarily what you excites you. Well, yeah. So um, naturally, when you meet a girl who's got a little bit of raw energy and she's from the hood and she's got that energy about her, which is you know the hood energy is it's very attractive because mm-hmm. they've got that energy about them. They're raw. They're fearless. Um, as comfortable as you might be in that setting yeah. it's not necessarily ideal for where you see yourself in the future so in future do you think you'll be better at identifying the red flags because I'm 100%. sure there may have been certain things that you didn't even see were a red flag it might have just been swearing like small, yeah. small things like swearing or using like foul language oh, or yeah. being a bit like uh, just even the way they oh, yeah. walk and talk and stuff um, it's not necessarily a red flag for everybody but for you personally in the journey that you're going that, that would be totally not oh, yeah. a red flag Wow. Because you're so used to that, yeah. and you grew up around it, and you know you've got elements of it when you grew up with it, and so and so you don't see it as a red flag. But the reality is, in the world that you live in now, that's not going to be compatible. Yeah. So we have to realize that you might not realize that they were red flags, but those were the red flags because right. they're a reminder of Road Adam, and you kind of want to leave Road Adam where he was. Yeah. Yeah. He served his purpose. Yeah. But going forward, Road Adam won't be constructive. And anybody that taps into Road Adam and anybody that's compatible with Road Adam will keep you back there. Yes. And you're wow. trying to elevate. Wow. So you do have to break that cycle. And how you break that cycle is not actually as difficult as it might seem. Yeah. So generally speaking, when you, um, if I just ask you generally, Adam, like, what do you prefer, peace or pleasure? What would you say if you're answering honestly? Like, say, for example, if you have a weekend off, do you want to enjoy yourself and do get something great and fun? Or do you want to stay at home and read a book, if you're being honest? 
I mean, pleasure. You can say you're a pleasure seeker. You're a pleasure seeker. I I can say that even from knowing you just for five minutes, I can tell that you're a pleasure seeker. You enjoy yeah. energy and life, and yeah. like you know, you what is that? And you're uh, you bring pleasure. You're yeah. very lively and you're very fun to be around. So you bring pleasure. You're a pleasure seeker. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the only problem with being a pleasure seeker is then when you look for a partner, you're probably do you seek pleasure or peace when you're looking for a partner do you look for somebody who you can have a lot of fun with or somebody who's a little bit boring but they calm you down if you're being honest if i'm being honest like someone who i have, have fun with yeah yeah and that's yeah. natural and that's totally fine yeah. but the problem with who brings you pleasure is in the long run you actually need peace especially with the lifestyle that you're going to be having mm -hmm. in the long run you actually have peace and if somebody brings you a lot of pleasure but no peace they're going to be a risk yeah, so they could be the funniest person in the room, lively, you can turn up, go to the wow, club, whatever wow. it is. They can bring you loads and loads of pleasure, but there's no happiness in pleasure in the long run. It's wow. very short term. Yeah. Long run, you need peace. Yeah? yeah. So when you do look for people, even if they have a million pleasurable things about them, yeah. it's better to actually be with somebody who brings you less pleasure, but more peace. But how do I find some, uh, what kind of way do you buy peace? Like, somebody, can I read a book where? <laughs> so it doesn't have to be boring. Is somebody who brings you peace. Now, what we mean by peace is they don't have any deal breakers. So, say for example, you meet a beautiful girl and she's hilarious, she's funny, she's vibrant, intelligent. You have crazy t good time together, but she's a bit uh, volatile, or she's a bit insecure, or she's yeah. jealous. Those are deal breakers. Oh, wow. So, even if she's got a million great things, but even one deal breaker, you'll never be at peace. Oh, wow. Whereas, if somebody has no deal breakers and they're not that fun, but they have no deal breakers, you'll always have stability. And in the long run, oh, wow. it takes longer, but in the long run, they will bring you pleasure because they don't have those deal so breakers. So, find someone who's not like. But you have to know what your deal breakers are. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say yeah. are your three, like if you had to be, like if you've taken, like being all the years that you've had relationships and connections, what would you say are three deal breakers that you think if you had this in a long-term partner, it would make it impossible for you to have a long-lasting relationship? What do you need from somebody? What could yeah. be, if they have this trait, I can't be with them. Have a think. Yeah, have yeah. a think. Take, a, yeah. take your time with that because it's quite a loaded question. So some people, what is like, they're controlling? Into, they're controlling. Controlling. Controlling, like I, I'm yeah. not a controlling person. I don't want a controlling yeah, person yeah. either. I don't so like, like a, a, a feisty argument to controlling. Yeah. Anything else that would be? Um, there's a lot more, but I just can't think of it in my head. Is what about is a loyalty one? Is disloyalty one? Is uh, what other things are there? If you is oh, of course, if you're disloyal, I wouldn't even talk to you. So disloyal? Yeah, yeah. disloyal. Yeah. So you know, with the ones that you're saying, argumentative, controlling, insecure, essentially, yeah. what you're suggesting is somebody who's quite insecure in the relationship. Yeah. You can find that quite out quite easily by looking at how she grew up. Now, if she grew oh. up in a uh, in a home that wouldn't didn't give her much love, and she hasn't really got that stable family environment. She's likely to be a little bit insecure, yeah, oh, likely. Yeah. Really. And then, yeah. as a result, they project it onto their partners until they get help. If they get help, they're totally fine. Yeah. But if they don't get help, that happens. So when you now meet girls going forward, what would be helpful for you instead of thinking of all the things you like, just use your deal breakers as a guide. Wow. The moment she's argumentative and controlling and disloyal, all these things. Don't be like, oh, but she's so funny. Oh, but she's so lively. Oh, oh she's so beautiful. That doesn't matter because these things will constantly resurface until yeah. the relationship self-destructs. Yeah. So there's no point. Yeah, even if you're having a great time with them, and you almost have to train your own brain to try and seek a little bit more peace than pleasure mm -hmm. because pleasure is overrated. Yeah. It's fun for the day. Peace is fun for life. Yeah, wow. and peace wow. will also help you stabilize all the other avenues in your life. Your career will get easier, everything. Yeah. You, because of the lifestyle you have, which is so unpredictable, mm -hmm. if you find a woman who's your peace, you will be able to perform better in everything you do because you go yeah. home to stability. But at the moment, because you're a pleasure seeker, like lots of people are, you'll end up selecting chaotic women. Yeah. And that chaotic women with your chaotic lifestyle will lead to a lot, lot, low, long-lasting relationships. Yeah. But you do want to. You said you you do want to settle down a bit. Like, yeah, of course. I mean, like everyone in my family is married, and I do want to settle down and find the one. Mm -hmm. But it's just I did learn, you know, from my past relationships. And as you're telling me right now, I'm learning more mm -hmm. to, you know, spot the red flags mm -hmm. much more earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of being in too deep. And then figuring out. Because yeah. remember, what is a red flag to you is familiar. 
-hmm. because of how you grew up. Yeah. Yeah, that, that hostile kind of environment, being bullied and stuff like that, that uh, red flags, because when you were growing up and you're being bullied and stuff like that, being around mean people or bullies was normal. So yeah. you didn't even see it as a red flag. It was yeah. very, very normal. Yeah. But in the real world, that is red flags. Oh, yeah? yeah. So it's just bearing that in mind that just because you're used to it and you can handle it doesn't yeah. mean it's... That's for sure. Yeah. Because this person like was mean to other people, but since she wasn't mean to me like that, yeah. I was just like, ah, it's but okay. You, you're yeah. familiar with that. Yeah, because right. you grew up with that. But the yeah. reality is that's not actually... And that's not actually how you are. Yeah. yeah? Especially not how you are now. That's not how you are. That's not yeah. how you kind of communicate with people. So that is... A, a bit of a red flag for you. Does the person who falls in love with you need to be a little bit mindful that sometimes Adam can adapt to his environment very quickly and placed in the wrong environment that could be a, 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 something to worry about in terms of the relationship? Um, I mean, I, I can be real with Adam even if she's with me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, not, not, not even if she's not, mm -hmm. not there, so... She doesn't need to worry too much? I, I don't think she should need to worry like because if I love her, then I, then I love her and I would never like disrespect her or, or yeah she, she would always I would want someone to always be there for me to make sure to know about Rhode Adam mm -hmm. so even when I'm not with them I would want them to call me like are you like I don't even know check up on me yeah so I don't think she, she doesn't should be worry. worried at all yeah. did uh, in the past in your relationships did the girls worry that you may be unfaithful yes a and lot what, of them. what was it that was causing them to feel like that and could you see why they thought that in their perspective? Of course, no, no. If I you would take know. your mind out, because you yeah. know your intentions, and your intentions, yeah. I'm guessing, wasn't to hurt anybody. Um, can you see why there might have been certain traits or patterns in your behavior that made her feel a little bit uncomfortable? Because some, like, let, let's say there'll be, like, other, uh, there'll be other females. Mm -hmm. Like, they would, I guess, they would, like, oh, Adam from YouTube, oh, my yeah. God, Adam. Like, they'll just... But to me, I don't look at it. There's immediate huh? relationships between people that you don't know. They immediately yeah. like, hi, yes. I don't, yeah. Like an immediate relationship. Immediate. But it's not like, I'm not really like, hey, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just not being normal. Okay, cool, what up? Like, uh -huh. If you can get an immediate re relationship from other females. And how is it for you being with one person knowing that, say if you did message this girl or you know, talk to that girl, that chances are they're going to respond. We talked about what comes with fame and stuff like that. How is it for you? Take any girlfriend out of there and just you think about Adam. Is this a difficult journey, being with one person? Being with one person? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never been with one person okay. longer than a year. So okay, so you haven't experienced it yet. I haven't experienced it yet. But do you think that one of the reasons why you haven't been with one person for that long is because of the amount of backup dancers? Yeah, I, I feel like that. Yeah. I feel like, it's a as I said, it's harder. Yeah. It's harder to find someone when you're, when you're known and in the limelight. Do you, do you know what it is? It's you have an illusion of options. In your mind and in your reality, because you know the fame, um, there's lots of people in queue. Yeah? Mm. But the, what Adam now has to do is recognize that the quality and quantity are not the same. Just because there's lots doesn't mean they're all going to serve a purpose. And they're definitely not going to bring you peace. Yeah. Yeah? They'll bring you lots and lots of pleasure, yeah. but what you, you want to start seeking peace. And you want no, to start right, seeking yeah. peace, yeah? yeah? And having lots and lots of girls, it's great for your ego, it's great for validation, all men need it, yeah. but you've done it. Yeah. You know it. You've, yeah. you've been there. You yeah. know what these girls are... You, you probably know 90% yeah. of women because yeah. of your experience with them and stuff like yeah. that. And um, until you make a conscious effort to actually reduce the pleasure that wow. comes from them and focus on the peace from one person, wow, yeah. this will always be an issue. Wow, it's amazing. Nah, no, for real. You think so? Yeah, no. Yeah, legit. and you have to start valuing the peace that comes from one woman yeah. rather than the pleasure that comes from hundreds mm -hmm. because that's always going to come from hundreds. Pleasure is always going to come from hundreds. But pleasure is something you've done to death. You're 28 years old. You've probably yeah. been to more countries than most yeah. people, seen most things, met most celebrities. You've done pleasure. Going forward, for your mental health, um, peace is probably more on the cards probably not yet 100%. but yeah, in the next couple of year or two do you want to be a father of course yeah i want to and you're great with kids yeah i, I want yeah. to be a dad yeah you want to be it, it, it can't happen until that switch yeah until that switch from pleasure to peace yeah. it can't happen because what would happen if you did do it prematurely and become a father and husband is if you're still in pleasure seeking mode it would lead to a chaotic family structure yeah and so yeah. it's good that you haven't done it Mm -hmm. But had you made that choice earlier, it would be chaotic, and then it leads to a new generation of trauma. Like, you've done a great job of removing your family from 
the hood. Yeah? yeah, you've done a great job of that. But what you don't want to do is start a new cycle of pleasure seeking because yeah. uh, you know, that could be it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but your kids are going to be a lot more spoiled than you were. Mm-hmm. And the best way to do that is when you become peace seeking, inshallah, everything else. You have a new generation of peace seeking, inshallah. Inshallah. So, inshallah. Yeah, the main thing is yeah. to find a wife now. Find a wife. Okay. And, and yeah. just be in no rush. But just the mm-hmm. mindset has to change because it's very difficult to find a wife when you're surrounded by women yeah. and options. Yeah. You have to actively close options because they're not going to go. Because what, sometimes what men think is one day I'll run out of options and then I'll settle alone. But yeah. you're not going to run out. Yeah. This is going to be a lifetime thing for you. Yeah. There's always going to be options. It's only when Adam decides to close the door on wow. him wow. and focus on one yeah. will he see success in relationships. Because it's not an accident that you haven't been in love for mm-hmm. in a long time. Yeah. yeah, it's not an accident. No, definitely. Yeah, it's yeah. not an accident. Uh, for everybody, everybody who's single and has been single for a long time, it's no accident. Mm-hmm. It's either because there's too much love that they get from people and so they see like themselves as untouchable and there's no one good enough and they don't invest in anybody, or there's too little love. Yeah. But it's not an accident, yeah? So you then have, you're in control of this. You're in control whenever you're ready. Mm-hmm.